So, hi everybody, I'm Victoria New. I'm a graduate student I'm getting my PhD in educational psychology at the University at Buffalo. And um, I've been working on the Tools of Engagement Project and the new MOOC um, for about three years now. And I've primarily been a project assistant slash administrative assistant, but um, I also help a lot with the data analysis, which is what this presentation is going to be about today. So the Tools of Engagement Project was a professional development opportunity for faculty from universities and colleges all across New York State to um, explore modules for specific um, instructional technologies and then to go into our community to discuss with other participants um, their experiences, share what was working, share what wasn't working, and just kind of network and collaborate with people within our community. So some things that made our, that made the Tools of Engagement Project unique were that people were really able to customize what they wanted to learn. Um, there were about 19 tools, I think, that they could choose from, and they really were able to pick the ones that they felt most fit with what they were trying to get across. Um, it's also self-paced and self-guided, so if people wanted to get this done in a weekend, they could do all the modules they want in a weekend. What if they wanted to expand it over four months? They had the ability to do that too. So it really gave our participants a lot of opportunity to customize their own learning. Um, just to show you some of the growth in our campuses from the first year to the fifth year. So in the first year, we started with five campuses. University of Buffalo, Binghamton, SUNY Cortland, SUNY Fredonia, and Buffalo State College. Um, each year we grew a little bit, adding a few campuses each year, and by the time we were in year five, I believe we were a little over 20 campuses. So although they were geographically separated across New York State, we were all held together through this Tools of Engagement project where people were able to communicate and collaborate across campuses. So in TOPE's fifth year, um, a grant was submitted to change TOPE into a MOOC. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar, a MOOC is a massive open online course and it's going to be able to be accessed globally. So whereas the Tools of Engagement Project was only available to particular campuses within New York State, this really makes TOPE and the content that was in TOPE available on a global scale. Um, so the MOOC is going to be, or is called, um, Exploring Emerging Technologies for Lifelong Learning and Success. We call it EM Tech for short. Um, it's a little different from TOPE um, in that our target audience is expanded. So TOPE really just um, targeted faculty, staff, professional staff that are on campuses. But um, EM Tech, we're really seeking to gain students, other professionals, and in addition to our classic audience of faculty and professional staff. Um, so the MOOC is offered through Coursera, which is one of the most popular platforms to access MOOCs. Um, unlike TOPE, where participants kind of went through tool-specific modules, all participants that go through our MOOC are going to go through the same five modules. So, Starting in module one, which is lifelong learning, um, everybody starts learning about the same things, but then participants get the opportunity within each module to customize their learning by, by picking the particular tools within the module that they want to explore. So instead of where TOPE, where it was just kind of each of the tools was independent, now each of the tools is kind of packed into one of these modules that they fit with, lifelong learning, collaboration and communication, creativity, critical thinking, and then our final summary and reflection module. So each of those contains several tools within it, giving people an opportunity to explore how those tools pertain to each one of those five topics. So this project that I did, this data analysis project, was part of a um, class that I took in the fall 2017 semester. I had to do a service learning project where I essentially just helped somebody with whatever tasks they need by providing a service for them. So I'm trained in quantitative data analysis, so that was my service that I provided to Robin. And what I really did was just help her 
analyze a lot of the TOPE data that existed to just see how we can take what we learned and make sure that the MOOC fixes any shortcomings, but also builds upon the success of TOPE at the same time. So what data did I analyze? So qualitative data, um, I analyzed a few years of reflections that were posted into our community. So the year two reflections were analyzed prior to this project by another graduate student and myself, Feng Rong. And um, years three, four, and five I did for this project. And then I also analyzed the open-ended survey responses from the last year of TOPE. And then as far as quantitative data that was analyzed, I looked at the year five data to, and ran some t-tests with that. So you might be wondering why we didn't analyze the earlier years of the quantitative data. And it was really a survey issue. So we didn't have the best instrument to collect the data. And it was really hard to show um, change within our participants because we weren't asking the right questions. So they say your the data you get is only as good as the instrument you have and our instrument wasn't very good so the data we got back in turn was not very good. So um, Robin and I worked really hard to revise the survey for the fifth year so that we could try to get more rich data and just really data that supported that TOPE was successful and impactful in the lives of the people that were participating. So um, essentially, we kind of disregarded the earlier data just because it wasn't um, as rich and as informative as the ones from year five. So just that's why we did that that way. Um, as far as the qualitative data analysis, each year, um, in order to be eligible for incentives, um, participants have to place a posting into the community, just kind of reflecting on their experience, saying what they learned, how they you know, how they progressed through the whole thing. And so for each of the years, there were different numbers of posts analyzed, um, concluding with year five, where we had almost 40 um, posts to the community. In terms of the open-ended survey responses that I analyzed, um, there were really just three questions that were pertinent to MOOC development. So there were other questions asked, but for this project, I was really trying to get out information from TOPE that would help guide the MOOC development. So these were three that I found to be the most relevant. So asking participants if they found the community to be a beneficial aspect, asking about the use of digital badges, and then just essentially asking what you would do differently if you were the designer of TOPE. For the quantitative data analysis, t-tests were used to um, assess change in a few different areas. So first, we looked at the number of tools. So we just asked on the pre and the post survey for participants to kind of check off the tools that they were using, either in their teaching or just their academic and professional life. Um, we asked them to indicate the frequency that they were using these instructional technologies, both overall, but then for specific purposes, which I'll get to in just a moment. And then we also assessed their self-efficacy for technology integration. In terms of the qualitative findings, um, this table just kind of shows you the top four findings from each of the years um, that we analyzed. And as you can see, there's pretty much a lot of consistency within the first three themes. So consistently, we see this immediate implementation, the vicarious learning um, through the experience of others in the community, but then also the eagerness to continue to explore um, the, all the modules after, program, after the program officially ended. So as you can see, there's a lot of consistency, but then as we get down into the fourth most common finding, it kind of varies from year to year. So it really shows how much the TOPE community kind of takes on a new character with each of the years that comes. Um, so every year, different people come to participate and those different people bring different experiences with them. They come from different disciplines. They're at different universities. And so as a result of these different groups of people, each um, community year kind of takes on its own little title. So um, these were the, the most common ones. And yeah, I'm not going to say too much more about that. So from the open-ended survey responses, we got some really great data out of this that, we, that was really helpful for the MOOC development. So 
Um, not surprisingly, we found out that the Tope community was one of the most favorite and effective aspects of their experience. This wasn't really surprising to us because anecdotally, we've had lots of people tell us that they really loved the community, they loved the networking aspect, they loved the support that they were able to get from other people, but then it also was a resource. So if people had a question, if they wanted to know did anybody use this in their class? Did it work out? How did your students feel about it? They could go to the community and they could just ask this question and they didn't have to do a trial and error for themselves. They could just get this information from other people. So that was really, um, by and large, I would say the most people's favorite aspect of TOPE. And something that we were a little surprised by was about half of our participants really liked the use of digital badges. Um, a quarter of them didn't really care too much and um, about a quarter didn't like them, but we had thought those numbers were a lot lower. So it was really great to see that people really responded well to the use of badges. And this was something that we kept in the MOOC as a primary component of the program. So we also received some really great suggestions on how to improve our participant experience. So just most generally improving the website navigation. A lot of people found it was really clunky to navigate the TOPE website. They didn't like that they had to go to a separate place for the community and then they did the modules in a separate place. So this was something that was worked on um, for the MOOC. People wanted a way to have more dynamic discussions. So instead of just having these conversations where somebody makes a post and then a reply and then maybe somebody else doesn't reply for another week, um, people had suggested maybe using video conferences, so using Zoom or Skype to hold small web conferences among participants with similar interests. Um, Another suggestion was to provide participants with a grade book just so that they could see how far they were towards getting a badge and or towards program completion. Um, so those were really the qualitative findings that we found and on to the quantitative findings in terms of the number of tools being used. There was a significant increase from the pre to the post. Um, pretty big increase. So before um, people came into TOPE, they were using roughly six of the instructional technologies and after participation, they were using close to eight. So almost a two point increase there. So that was really great to see that people were able to turn around and take the tools that they were using about and really immediately implement them into their courses. So just to kind of visually show you the change in tool utilization, um, all of these 19 tools were the ones that we asked about and you can see there's increases in all of them except for a few. So none decreased, which is good. Um, I think presentation stayed the same and social media also slightly decreased, but in general, there were increases across the board. So that was really great to see people utilizing what they were learning about. Um, in terms of the frequency of use, looking at overall frequency of using instructional technologies for various purposes, there was a small but significant increase. Um, so this was out of a five-point scale. It increased from 3.16 to 3.35, and that was the average score for their frequency of use. Small difference, but still significant and notable. Um, in terms of using the instructional technologies for specific purposes. Overall, there was an increase in using the tools specifically to make the course more interactive for students. Um, so the other purposes we didn't see as much of an increase and it was not significant. So I'll tell you what those were in a moment, but um, this one was a really great finding because this was one of the primary goals of TOPE was to give these tools and this information to the faculty so that they can make their courses more interactive and more engaging for their students. So the fact that they were, that we saw an increase in this specifically for this purpose is really great because it's supporting that TOPE was doing what we set out to do. So some of the specific purposes we did not see changes in. So to prepare course content, to access information resources, to communicate with students and colleagues, and to increase student engagement with course material. So for these ones, we did not see significant increases, but for um, to make the course more interactive, we did see an increase. So it's valuable. 
In terms of self-efficacy for technology integration, we found overall there was an increase in people's confidence for technology integration. So what does that mean? It means essentially they feel more confident in their ability to integrate technology into their courses. So the average self-efficacy score before was a 3.75 and after, again, this is out of a five-point scale, and after it was 4.11. So not a huge increase, but it's significant and it's notable when we're considering it's only out of a five-point scale. So what were the outcomes of this project that I did? So we really got a ton of information that we were able to turn around and use towards the MOOC development. So the quantitative analysis really gave us support for the effective components of TOPE. So the model was effective, the number of tools we were teaching about, um, we increased self-efficacy. So these statistics really provided us with support for the impact and the effectiveness. The qualitative analysis really helped us to understand what were the most and least effective aspects of the program. So what should we continue? What should we kind of work on? And what should we get rid of altogether? So all of the findings that I had were summarized in a report and I did give that report to the MOOC development team in the third week of December. So there's about eight or nine recommendations that I think I came up with. So I'm just going to kind of briefly go over those now. So the, these re recommendations were the culmination of both the quantitative and the qualitative analysis. Um, so first and foremost, make the MOOC simple and easy to navigate. Time and time again, we heard from people in TOPE that they really did not like the website. The website seemed like outdated and hard to navigate. And so make the interface simple, make it easy to navigate, house everything in one place so people don't have to go to and from different websites. Um, assure that the demands placed upon, placed upon participants are reasonable and allow them ample time for completion. Um, I think sometimes in the past with TOPE, people just felt like there were too many aspects of like busy work to do. And so we really wanted to make sure that participants were engaging in activities that they felt were enriching their experience and making a good use of their time. So we also want to maintain the use of badges, especially considering that badges currently are um, experiencing growth and they're really being used more widely than they ever have before. So I think it's good to continue the use of these. Um, so in terms of making more dynamic interactions within the community, we really wanted to try to set up forums that promote these interactions instead of just having isolated posts with replies. So I don't think we've really gotten there yet with the MOOC, but I think that that's something that we're working on for the future. Um, same thing, incorporating web conferences and meetings into the MOOC. We do have some web conferences, but I think um, getting more web conferences set up for the participants so that they can interact with other people in the community would be a really great um, recommendation moving forward. Um, and then something else that we that had kind of come out of the community reflections was that a lot of people didn't necessarily make their own postings in the community, but still felt like they learned a lot just by reading other people's posts. So I think that it's important that we encourage all participants to read community interactions, even if they themselves don't want to post anything. Even in a typical classroom, you'll have your people that are quiet and you'll have your people that are very talkative. Um, so we should expect the same thing in a community, but really encouraging the people that are a little bit more on the quiet side to read the community interactions so that they can still gain information this way. So um, some of the past HOPE participants had found success by um, meeting students on platforms that they were already familiar with. So um, just another way to kind of get faculty to modernize their classes and to make content more relevant to students by meeting them on platforms they're already using. So students have cell phones with them. Instead of seeing the cell phone as a distraction, have them complete an assignment on it, something like that. So another recommendation for the MOOC was to offer a course credit or a certificate of completion specifically for students. So students were one of the groups that we found 
that we were going to have the most difficulty motivating to participate specifically because I think most students of today don't see themselves as having a deficiency in technology knowledge. I think it's quite the opposite, but that doesn't mean that there's nothing for them to learn. I just think it's an issue of perspective. So in order to motivate them to participate, perhaps offering some type of credit that can be used towards coursework or some type of certificate that they can at least show that they did this course and they learned something from it. And last recommendation, just to constantly keep evolving the material, keep it fresh and keep it relevant. So that seems kind of self-explanatory. Um, so looking forward, our MOOC launched this past January. We just finished up our pilot period and we are looking to March when we are officially launching. Um, and so that's about it.